Hello everyone, welcome back to King's Special Data Science Code Camp series. My name is Zara, and in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about the basic concepts in Python. So hopefully by now, you have finished your first and second notebooks. For the next one, you should be getting ready to work on your third notebook. Again, all these materials are available in the King's Geocomputation website. From now on, there are four types of exercises available for you for the rest of the notebooks. The first one is where you will be able to code from scratch. You can use the lessons that we have given you as starting point and start coding using blank cells. The second one is supported code, where you will fill in some gaps in the lines of code, as we have replaced some bits with lots of question marks. The third one is broken code. Here, we have deliberately break something in your code and you will need to fix this before it will run successfully. It's called debugging. And the last one, but not the least definitely, which is my favorite, you will be applying GeoExample to demonstrate a real world application of the concept covered in the lessons. Next, let's talk about operator precedence. Python has well-defined rules for specifying the order of the operators. Here, I have specified some of the common operators from the highest precedence to the lowest ones. Operators with the highest precedence appear at the top of the table. Those with the lowest appear at the bottom. For example, parentheses has the highest precedence followed by exponentiation, as well as plus and minus signs. Multiplication and division have a higher precedence than addition and subtraction. Let me demonstrate how operator precedence work when we are working on our notebook. Let's take a look at some examples. So if I have an expression over here, 10 minus 15 times 5 is minus 65. So we know that multiplication has a higher precedence than subtraction and that is why Python execute multiplication first than the subtraction but we can change this order by using parenthesis which is higher than the multiplication itself so if we do this The result is totally different because now the equation inside the parenthesis is executed first, then it's being multiplied by 3. We can also test this with other expressions, um, for example, exponential. If we have 10 to the power of 2 minus 50 divided by 5, we know that exponentiation has higher precedence than the division. And that is why the exponentiation will be executed first, then the division, then the subtraction. But again, we can modify this by applying parentheses. So now instead of getting 90 as the output, we got 10 as the output. Variables are containers for storing your data values. For example, here I have a value of 10 in my variable A. I'm gonna put 50 as my variable B and 5 as my variable C. And in my variable D, I'm gonna put um, 20. So now I have four variables, A, B, C, and D, all with different data values. What happened if I redeclare the value of my variable? So for example, A, I don't want 10, actually I want 7. What is our variable after, the, um, after we redeclare it? So it's a 7, the most current value. After we assign values to our variable, we can do calculations with these variables. So for example, I want to say what 
is A plus B plus C plus D it's 82 here we can also do exponent A to the power of 2 is 49 because A is 7 we can do a more complicated equation as well so A to the power of 3 plus 1000 is 1343 now let's talk about data types in Python there are six main data types in Python which is text numeric sequence mapping boolean and binary the first one is numeric numbers are stored as numeric values in Python and they can be integer float and complex integer and float are similar however in integer decimal points are absent so here I have created three variables as example Variable A, B, and C contains three different values and three different data types. Let's see which variable belongs to which data type. Let's run this. And let's check our data types. So we can see here that variable A is an integer, variable B is a float, and variable C is a complex. Let's move on to text data type. Strings, or known as SDR, store sequence of character data. We can use single, double, or triple quotes to represent strings. Here, I have an example of a variable called university, and I store King's College London inside my variable. Let's run this. All right, the next one, let's check the data type. Again, we are going to use the type function. And we can see that our university variable contains string data type. Moving on to sequence. The first one, we have Python list, which is an ordered sequence of items. This is widely used in Python, and it doesn't have to contain the same data types. In my first example here, I combine string, integer, as well as float in my list. Then we have tuple, which is similar to list, but the difference is while we can alter our list, tuple is immutable. That means that we cannot change it. Let's have a look. So let's run our, our first variable x and our second variable y. Notice that I write it differently. The first one I'm using brackets and the second one I'm using parentheses. Let's check the data type. Again, we can use type function and we can see that our first one, variable x, is a list and our second one, variable y, is a tuple. We can access our list and tuple using slicing operator to extract the items inside. We can extract an item based on the order they're in. So this is zero, the first one, the second one, and the third one. So if we want to access the zero item, we'd run it and we'll get KCL. Now let's try changing the values inside our list. For example, in my variable x, I want to change the value of my first item to 10. If we call our variable again, now we have KCL, 10, Apple, and 15.0. We just change 1 to 10. Can we do the same with our tuple? So instead of the number 2, I'm 
gonna change my first item into 100 in my tuple. What we got is an error because tuple object does not support item assignment. The next data type is Python dictionary, which is an unordered collection of key value pairs. Dictionaries are defined within braces. For example, here I have my groceries variable and inside I have put three sets of key and value pairs. My first key is fruit and the value is apple. The second key is dairy with the value of milk and the third key is veg with the value of cucumber. Let's run this. You can also access the items inside our dictionary like we did with our list. We can use the key to retrieve the respective values inside our dictionary. For example, here, from our variable, retrieve the values from the key that is called dairy. And we'll have our result, which is milk. We can also convert one data type to another. Let's take a look at the variables we previously made. There you go, as well as the type of each variables. So we know we have an integer, variable A, and um, the float, list, and tuple for our variables B, X, and Y. Let's say that we want to switch variable A from integer to float. So instead of 5, we want 5.0. We can do that by simply redeclaring our variable and say float a and then we can check the type. Now instead of integer, our variable a became float. If we check instead of 5, now it's 5.0. We can also switch a list we can say type X it's a tuple now now you can't modify variable X because it's not a list anymore lastly we can also switch numbers into text or string just by saying let's use variable b so b equals to string b let's call the type b it's a string and if you try to do an equation b plus 5 it won't allow it anymore because you need variable b to be a string not integer to do equation instead you can just say b plus is now a string <laughs>